Oliver Sacks, Musicophilia, Tales of Music and the Brain. Embark on an enthralling journey through the world of music and the human brain in A Musicophilia, Tales of Music and the Brain, by Oliver Sacks. This book explores the diverse ways in which humans experience music, from those with amusia, an absence of musical ability, to professional musicians and individuals with extraordinary musical talents. Additionally, you'll delve into fascinating neurological phenomena such as synesthesia and the mysterious origins of musical genius. Musicophilia it demystifies complex notions, making it accessible for everyone interested in the powerful and evocative world of music and its impact on the human brain. Musical Inclinations Musicophilia explores the predisposition to create and enjoy music in diverse cultures. However, some individuals lack musical abilities, and others are indifferent to music. These individuals have a condition known as amusia, which manifests in tone and rhythm deafness. Tone-deaf individuals have difficulty recognizing notes and singing, and rhythm-deaf individuals cannot follow the rhythm of music. While some people can still enjoy music and dancing despite having gross tone or rhythm deafness, those with amusia in its absolute sense do not perceive music as such. They may hear disturbing sounds in place of melodies. Additionally, certain historical figures, such as Darwin and Freud, reported their indifference to music. How Musicians' Brains Work Musicians' brains are different from those of non-musicians due to the changes acquired through training. Research shows that virtually everyone can become a musician through training and practice, as our brain responds rapidly to musical training at any age. The Suzuki method is a prime example as it trains children to play the violin through listening and imitation. The Fascinating World of Absolute Pitch Absolute pitch, the unique ability to identify any pitch, is a rare capability that only one out of 10,000 people possess. Even so, there is only a 10% chance of a musician having it. Whether a blessing or a curse, absolute pitch can prove to be distressing and disabling for some musicians, especially when dealing with out-of-tune musical instruments. Some well-known musicians like Mozart had this ability, but it didn't seem to be crucial to their musical prowess. On the other hand, an astounding pianist had trouble playing the Moonlight Sonata, because the piano was tuned to a different pitch than he was accustomed to. Absolute pitch may sound like a valuable talent, but it's more common among musicians and isn't necessarily a critical element of musical ability. Synesthesia and blindness, the unseen enhancers of musicality. Discover how synesthesia and blindness can heighten one's musical abilities. What do colors have to do with music? For synesthetes, certain sounds trigger sensory experiences in seemingly unrelated senses. This rare condition can lead to extraordinary musical capabilities, enabling musical synesthetes to see colors that correspond to certain musical keys and patterns. Blindness is another factor that can enhance musicality. Deprived of visual stimuli, blind individuals rely heavily on sound, sometimes exhibiting exceptional musical abilities spontaneously and without any formal training. Brain research shows that the visual cortex doesn't simply shut down when it lacks visual input, instead, other senses become heightened, particularly auditory senses. This may explain why 60% of blind musicians have absolute pitch compared to just 10% of sighted musicians. The loss of vision can also sometimes lead to synesthesia. Composers like David Caldwell use color to enrich and clarify their musical compositions. By exploring synesthesia and its role in musical composition, this book sheds light on how different sensory experiences can be used for creative purposes. The Surprising Link Between Music and Savants Do you need to be highly intelligent to be musical? Not according to the most common type of talent among savants, intellectually disabled people who show extraordinary abilities. Take Martin, for example. Despite his disability, he developed a passion for music and had a phonographic memory, able to remember every piece of music he heard. He knew more than 2,000 operas, their exact scores and could transpose them into different keys. 
Damage to the left hemisphere of the brain heightened Martin's musical powers and inhibited the development of his other abilities. Similarly, those with Williams syndrome, a genetic disorder characterized by heart defects, unusual facial structures, and decreased intellectual ability, have a heightened sensitivity to music. Despite not being able to complete simple math problems, a young woman with Williams syndrome could sing operatic arias in more than 30 languages. Studies have shown that people with Williams syndrome use a much wider set of neural structures to perceive and respond to music, making them almost helplessly attracted to music. The Healing Power of Music Music has been proven to have a healing effect on various medical conditions. Tourette syndrome patients have found relief in jazz and rock due to the genre's improvisational nature. Parkinson's disease patients can improve movement with well-defined rhythm music. Even patients who have become immobile due to accidents or strokes have regained mobility through systematic exposure to music. A nursing home patient with a temporarily paralyzed leg was able to walk again after listening to Irish jigs. Music has the ability to activate the motor system and kickstart limbs into action. Overall, music has a mobilizing effect that helps with movement disorders and a variety of other medical conditions. The Therapeutic Power of Music Music therapy is a modern therapeutic approach that involves composing, playing or listening to music to achieve individualized therapeutic objectives. First developed to help war veterans cope with physical and psychological trauma, this therapy is now widely used to assist people with aphasia and dementia. Music therapy is especially effective for people with aphasia, where listening to and singing along with music stimulates areas of the brain that are not affected by the speech impairment. For example, a stroke patient named Samuel was able to speak again after just two months of music therapy. Similarly, music can help dementia patients recall buried memories, allowing them to connect with their former selves. Woody, a dementia patient, could hardly remember anything about his life except for the music he had sung. Thus, music therapy has emerged as a potent therapeutic tool to help people in situations where traditional methods may fall short. When music turns deadly. Some individuals with epilepsy experience seizures triggered by certain types of music, a disorder known as musicogenic epilepsy. The specific music that triggers the seizures varies from patient to patient, with some affected by specific instruments, notes, melodies, or songs. These seizures can be so severe that they induce a fear of music in individuals, with some famous individuals developing musicophobia following their experiences. One patient suffered a seizure after merely imagining a piece of music, while another had seizures while listening to her favorite CD. Though many individuals know that flashing lights can trigger seizures in epileptic individuals, less is known about the impact of music. Musical Hallucinations Many people experience musical hallucinations, a form of perception where the music feels as real as if it's coming from external speakers. Physiologists have linked these hallucinations to hearing loss, especially in elderly people. The loss of sound triggers the brain to generate its own audio stimulation, which can activate the same brain structures that respond to real music. However, musical hallucinations have no specific cure, and sufferers may have to learn to live with them. In this book, we explore the science behind musical hallucinations and how they affect people's lives. Musical Obsession and Talent Emergence Lightning Strikes and Sudden Musical Talent, The Neurological Mystery Have you ever wished to possess a musical talent that sets you apart from the rest? Be careful what you wish for. The book describes two correspondents and the sudden emergence of their musical passion and expertise, leading to an obsession that left no room for anything else. One correspondent, Sicoria, after being hit by lightning, became so engrossed in music that he barely had time for the rest of the world, he started buying piano recordings and ended up borrowing a piano to constantly practice and write compositions. Eventually, he dedicated so much time to music that his wife divorced him, but even that did not stop his passion for playing brilliantly. The other correspondent, Grace M., surprisingly developed the ability to compose complete songs without any prior musical inclination. Three years later, 
she had recorded over 3,300 fragments and making about four complete songs in a month, which received criticism from professional musicians. Their neurological scans, however, showed no signs of brain damage, the usual cause of sudden release of musical talents. The book explores how lightning strikes and other physical or psychological conditions could explain the emergence of musical obsessions. Oliver Sacks' Musicophilia, Tales of Music and the Brain, enlightens the readers on how music profoundly affects the brain and human experiences. Throughout this captivating read, you'll learn about rare disorders like amusia, synesthesia, and musicogenic epilepsy, and explore the astonishing musical abilities of the visually impaired and those with neurological conditions. The book also delves into the importance of music therapy for patients with various disorders, demonstrating the remarkable healing power that music possesses. With its engaging narrative and user-friendly approach, Musicophilia offers a fascinating glimpse into the mind-blowing relationship between music, the brain, and the human experience.